Hello and welcome to episode 76 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. When you listen to this, it will be January 29th, 2018, and I am Rollo McFlugel, and with me is Slappy Jones 2, and we are both at McFlugel.com. The show notes page for this episode will be McFlugel.com slash 76, where you'll be able to find links to things we're talking about, as well as ways to subscribe to the podcast and uh, check out all of our other social media outlets to keep in touch with us. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Slappy, and he's going to introduce our episode and our guest. Yeah, thank you, Rallo, and thank you, everyone, for listening to us today. There was some big news earlier this week in Brazil. Their former president, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, was sentenced to prison for a long time, and he was a socialist. And he goes by Lula. Well, I, b- I believe that's the way we will refer to him. Um, so this is big news. So we brought on our friend from Brazil, Nina Maria Bastiat, to talk about it. So welcome to the Rollo and Slappy Show, Nina. Hi, guys. So tell us a little bit about the news this week. What went on? What happened? Who is Lula? And uh, how long is he going to be locked in a cage? So Lula was our ex-president. And he's from the Workers' Party. And he's been in power for like 10, I think 10 to 12 years. And he, this week he was convicted Mm -hmm. for his crimes and bribery and also for um, make like putting a makeup on the situation, financial situation of the country. Cover up. Yeah. Yeah. Lying about it. Fraud. Sure. Exactly. And actually he was convicted last year, but he could uh, appeal Mm. and he put the appeal on it and um, he was convicted for nine years. And today he was uh, this week, he was uh, tried for that appeal and denied and convicted. Actually, he's uh, he he was uh, he's um, the time that he was supposed to stay in jail was nine years. It was actually expanded to 12 years and wow. yes exactly he's supposed to be in jail by february 20th but apparently there's something that he can do that it just show up today that he can uh, appeal again one last time <laughs> of course. however no one thinks that he's able to get away this time so that's why i popped my champagne this week i know that he's not going to be able to run uh, he wanted to run for elections again this year he won't be able really? to yes so do they have term limits at all in brazil four years but we are the, we are the only country in the world apparently that has um electronic voting so that's really easy to hack and yeah. there's proof that it's been hacked and that's why they've been able to be in power for so long hmm. so he was not he, I'm, i don't even know how he can he was present for eight years at the eight to 10 because he was still responsible for a few things. And I don't even know how he can go again. Okay, because we imitate the United States on Two like, terms, con- yeah. con- yes, exactly. So I don't know how he can do it again, but apparently he can, and he was going to run again in November <laughs> this year. And he's desperate because he wants to, you know, he knows that his party is gonna lose power in the majority this year. That's and totaling like, it's gonna be 20 up to 20 20 something years under socialist control wow yeah so how did he how did he keep getting elected and and even elected in the first place what was kind of the environment when he first came to power in brazil among the people to build on that question a little bit so he's been in power for so long and now he's going to prison that sounds like i mean maybe i'm just used to the united states but I can't imagine too many politicians going to prison right, um, at exactly. any level. So how, I mean, did the whole political environment turn on him or, you know, talk a little bit about that. Okay. I, I just so, quick history. Yeah. Brazil had a dictate dictatorship, uh, military dictatorship, just like every South American country for longest of times. Right. Uh, we had it for 40 years until up to 80s when we actually were able to vote in 1989 and uh, according to our new constitution, the seventh one. So he ran at that time. And, but we got a centrist president until from 89 until 96, 90, 96, 97. 
-hmm. Yes. So he took power in 98 um, or 2000, something like that. I was very young. I don't quite remember. But okay. he uh, he did it with the whole social de democrat of the 21st century conversation, like uh, only the rich people and the white people go to, you know, the get money and only they go to schools and you know that conversation that socialist conversation that always goes on right. <laughs> so everybody's like yeah we're tired of this you know that the minority having all the money and we're all poor and we're all this and that so with that divisiveness he managed to sneak into power and the workers party the labor party i think it's in many countries called is Pure socialism, Maduro style. He was best friends mm. with Maduro, with uh, Bolivar, um, mm -hmm. with the per Peruvian to do, uh, president too, and the Cristina something, I don't know, for Argentina. So yeah. they made this alliance in which like, they all managed to stay in power in all these countries for, for all this time. However, in Brazil, like... It, it was, we were about to become Venezuela, right? Because the way that he was ruling was just about, it uh, was just with a lot of um, cronyism. Mm -hmm. And he drove Petrobras, which is our petro, uh, petroleum. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, petroleum. Yep. Uh, and oil companies to the ground. And so from that, from driving that company to the ground mm -hmm. is where, or somewhat partial, in, I mean, sorry, impartial um, justice uh, department got after him and started doing this five year long bribery, whatever uh, investigation and got to him and to the president that came after him, which was Duma Hussef. I don't know if you remember, we had a impeachment so that's of the president. A, that's interesting. Three years ago. It was what was turned people turned on him or at least the establishment uh what have you turned on him was because he was losing the money basically it sounds like yes exactly <laughs> and he in the beginning it all worked you know of the course. country right. the country was going okay a lot of kids were going to school and people were getting jobs and blah 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 all of that and uh, within four years it always started to going down or inflation was under control the problem was their numbers that's which is exactly why or her, his successor Dilma got impeached because she literally faked all the numbers hmm. that's the <laughs> only reason why they were able to call her not because of the Petrobras schemes and bribery schemes that that pretty much got up to now five presidents of South America impeached because of the bribery schemes in Brazil it's because of uh, uh, the money started, you know, going away. No, and the economy started breaking, and they were lying to your face. Like people don't have jobs, and they were telling on TV that you know more jobs were being open, were being were being brought to Brazil because of the 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 company, the oil company. Mm -hmm. Lie after lie after lie. After a while, people realize there are no jobs, and he keeps telling you there's jobs, and starts to change. Does that sound accurate? Yes, that sounds very accurate. And you, especially in Rio, Rio, mm -hmm. Rio de Janeiro had a, a new refinery open. And we bought a, the president bought, signed a, uh, the buyout of a company in Pasadena that for, hmm. for nine times the actual price. <laughs> and they found that out and they, they didn't understand why did you buy that thing? Like nobody, like that thing is like garbage. Pasadena is Texas, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. California. Anyway, oh, yeah. California. California. <laughs> okay. And, and another scheme that is actually being tried by United States, but yeah, things like that. It just, the money went away. There were no money at all and no jobs and nothing. And the econ economically, we were broken. Hmm. Can you hear that? Yes. Oh, <laughs> The, um, so, so how are, how is like the general population or how, how are people reacting to all of this? Are they recognizing that socialism failed or do they see it as just like, oh, we just have a, a corrupt, some corrupt, uh, rulers or leaders is the problem. So Brazilians hate po po politics, right? But it's mandatory to vote. Hmm. So you have to vote. It doesn't oh, matter if, 
<laughs> the, free, the freedom to vote, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's because it, it's your right that they conquered in 1989. So constitutionally, it's your right to mandatorily vote. Wow. Anyways, so so uh, we, we, it doesn't matter. People actually didn't vote for a lot of them. But since you can vote for uh, what you can give a white vote, which is a blank vote okay. in the in the machine, which is what I do used to do. So anyways, the people started seeing like this is all a failure. This is fake as fuck. It's not working. However, they kept winning. But it's because those machines are usually very easy to hack. So that was proven to you in court that they were hacking the, the elections. One of the reasons why he was going to be tried for it. Hmm. He's literally responsible for it. But people were very like, okay, this doesn't work. What are we going to do? One, uh, there's no right-wing politicians in Brazil, right? Hmm. So it was a beautiful camp, to, a beautiful field to flourish a libertarianism. And that's how I found out about libertarianism three years ago through the internet. A lot oh, of like people started... Uh, following libertarian pages, anarcho-capitalist pages. We have one of the biggest YouTuber, Brazilian YouTuber channels, which started right uh, like a year before the impeachment of the socialist president, talking about libertarianism and all that, and Mises and Rothbard and all those books. One of the biggest YouTuber, Brazilian YouTuber channels. And it, it, it was amazing kind of how it went straight to like socialism, to libertarianism and not actually to right wing you know what no, i'm saying that's fantastic yeah that's, that's so awesome do you do you think there's um like a sizable population that's starting to learn this stuff oh yeah absolutely so like i said we don't like politicians and we don't like politics we're just made to vote however uh because of that we once voted for a uh hip hippopotamus to take <laughs> he was the hippopotamus she was the most voted uh politician <laughs> in one That's of the awesome. elections because we hate it we it's it's absurd nobody trusts politicians in brazil it's amazing but a lot of people still cannot think about like not having uh, government yeah. at all so well yeah i mean that's we, that's difficult the for same anyone thing. yeah we said the same thing in the united states you could talk to any republican and democrat and you could joke about how dirty the politicians are and how no one should ever trust them, and everyone agrees. But uh, if you say we should get rid of them, then they have a big problem. Exactly. So this cha those channels, now we have up to like five or seven channels on that are pretty big on anarcho-capitalism that gave this idea, and people are actually liking it. But you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how far they will take it. <laughs> Yeah, they did set they did set Congress on fire two years ago, but literally, <laughs> yeah, wow. they, a lot of people like literally invaded it and set it on fire uh, with uh, they, they set um, tires on fire and threw it in there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, people are pissed, I, I would say. Yeah, yeah sounds I like mean, it. Says, yeah, sounds like it. So you're saying uh, we've been talking on Twitter and you've said that there's some actual privatization reforms that the, the Brazilian government's doing. Can you speak to that a little bit? Cause I think that's, that's pretty neat that there's actually improvements being made. Yeah, absolutely. So there was this, um, the, the house that we have that prints money. It was costing a lot of money to the state. We call it the coin, the coin house. Casa da Moeda, and they decided last year to privatize it. And someone just bought it right away with a lot of money. Someone saw uh, it was going to be a good deal. Because of that, the president and the house decided that they were like, okay, how about we privatize more stuff? Because we can make money right now because we're all going to be kicked mm. out of here pretty <laughs> soon. So <laughs> right. how about we all just make some money right now. They started privatizing a lot of uh, state-run companies. Uh, airports, a lot of airports privatized, um, uh, uh, subway systems in cities were privatized, um, and uh, unions. The biggest thing with the privatization is that they, those deals were only made if 
unions were undone, mandatory unions were undone. We have up to 114 unions in Brazil. It's insane. Nobody they, can work. Are they government sanctioned unions? Exactly. It's yeah. mandatory. You cannot run away from it. A huge chunk of your pay will go to unions. Wow. And they, yes, it's mandatory. You cannot run away, basically. So, which is where the Workers' Party get their money. Right. Right? Mm. Yep. So, excuse me. And um, those, the mandatory part was, was undone last year. And it's law, like, a, 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 I think in June it will go, like, you can, June from this year, you cannot, you don't have to pay for, or you don't have to be a part of unions anymore. And they already had, um, the unions were complaining that they already had the, uh, like, biggest numbers of people undoing their membership <laughs> or request for that. And it's not even law yet. So you can see that because of unions, we, it's, they are bringing down jobs in brazil they are bringing down the economy so undoing that was a huge mm -hmm. thing and because That's lula was convicted uh because i'm sorry before lula was convicted not a lot of people was sure if that was going to be a thing or not because if he was elected in november if it only runs from june to november it doesn't matter because he's going to make it mandatory again when once he's elected right you yeah. think there would so have been the, a good chance he got elected does he still I have think, a lot of yes, support? There, we still have a lot of stupid people, yeah. And rigged yeah. rigged voting machines. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the the hacking the hacking itself is is I don't know why we don't make that uh, we don't go to paper. I don't know, but it, the whole thing is a, is a joke. But the hacking itself just makes sure that he's gonna win again. Do they so, do they blame Russia down there for the election hacking too? Like they do. Oh in the no, US? not at all. <laughs> <laughs> We're part of BRICS. So it's like, yay, Russia's nice to us. Good, you know, good. Because of BRICS. So, <laughs> so yeah, he. Um, the fact that those privatizations happened last year, and the unions were the union mandatory thing was undone, it kind of started popping some jobs. You know, it, it was good for the, the the economic field. The fact that he was not going to be, that there was a possibility to bring him back and his party back, kind of slowed things down. This week, because of his second conviction, I don't know if I told you guys the the stocks kind of with inflation or not kind of skyrocketed, which is a sign that that's what people want, you know. Yeah, people nobody are wants, buying. They think there's a good future. Exactly. Nobody wants to invest in a country that cronyism and bribery runs its rampant, and nobody wants corruption. You know, to put their money where corruption is never uh you know never like is punished right right so the thing is if if he doesn't get the chance to run for elections again we still have a choice a chance of becoming a country yeah. <laughs> a livable place <laughs> well it's it's insane that I mean, Brazil, it's it's a huge country with a with a pretty big population as far as huge I know. Huge population. And and yeah. some huge cities like Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro are huge cities by by world standards. And yeah. you've got all the Amazon out there. I mean, there's so much land, so many natural resources. Like you spoke about the oil. I mean, it's such an untapped potential. And if 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 the free market and privatization improvements stick, and some wealth starts getting created down there. I mean, the sky, the sky's the limit. So that's, I mean, that's got to be so exciting. I agree with that. I agree with that. As a, as a nurse, like I've been a nurse in America and I've been a nurse in Brazil and it's the, the difference is ridiculous. You can like, as a nurse in Brazil doesn't make any money. And it's like, you are literally a slave to the unions and it's terrible. Okay, there's no limits. I, I can only say from my standpoint that just the unions take down is a, just taking down the union for me is amazing. Imagine for other people with like more, you know, uh, ideas and entrepreneurship in Brazil is always it, capitalism is always seen as an evil thing. You know, making money in Brazil is a crime. Mm -hmm. It's a crime. <laughs> e, why do you want to make money? You know, being poor is a beautiful and amazing. It's virtuous, yeah. Yes, exactly. So making money and giving people jobs is evil. That's why unions are there to protect you. <laughs> so <laughs> taking that down, I, I, I agree with you, Brother. Like Brazil is a 
it's good people, hardworking people, but it with this government or any government, but especially this one, we are not we're not gonna go anywhere. And we're gonna keep on being like this. So are you are you current is, is there a nursing or nurses union or was there? Oh I can tell you that there's five nurse unions. Okay. I have to subscribe to two to three of them. Wow. Why? Whoa. That doesn't uh, even make sense. You tell me. I don't know why. <laughs> just tell me I have I can to. get it. They so were like, you have to be in one, but you got to pay three. That's, well, a, that's interesting. I understand that in the United States, things are ran, but uh, most laws are state, right? In Brazil, it's federal law rules overall. There is no difference from states. Okay. So I have to subscribe to the local one. I have to subscribe to the federal one. And I have to subscribe to one that I don't even know. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not even joking. I don't know. And I, so you, I'm like, mm, I'm not even gonna wanna know because if I want to know, I'm gonna go to your headquarters. I'm gonna break <laughs> your face. <laughs> you're gonna violate the NAP. But you're a nurse. Right. You're defending yourself. But, and because of them, I cannot work more than a certain amount of time per day. So they per limit week. everything you do, right? Yes, exactly. They track it. If I work more, they, the hospital has to pay me double. I'm not even joking. It's double hmm. if I work more. So it's better for them to let people die because they don't have to respond for it than actually have me in there working more hours than I, that I can and that I want to. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's funny. Not funny, but um, my, my sister's a nurse. And um, the way they, I mean, they have over time, I, I don't know that she's in it, if she has to be in a union or if she is in one. But they have things where, uh, just just to counter counter example mm -hmm. of um, in Brazil with getting paid, when they have a nurse shortage and they need someone to kind of come in uh, when they're not normally scheduled, they start offering more and more money. So I think my sister got like triple pay one time to to do like a f extra four hour shift or something. So it just shows a little bit the difference between um, having a little bit of capitalism that that is in the U.S versus yeah. socialism I know. That, that you I, can make a lot of money out of it. I know. I worked in the United States. Okay. Gonna, that was another thing I wanted to ask you about. You mentioned there was differences in being a nurse in the United States as well as Brazil. Um, in your day-to-day -day job and your duties, so, okay, does Brazil have nationalized health care? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I know this God. could take yes. us down a, a wrong path, but... What are some differences you see in the United States versus a, um, you know, in Brazil where it's a uh, nationalized or a single payer? Or, uh, oh my God. How to, where to start? I don't know. Uh, in Brazil, like the, literally the, 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 uh, we don't have room for everybody in the um, public sector. And it's just depressing because as a nurse in Brazil, I cannot do half of the things, literally it's out of my scope to do half of the things I do in the United States. Hmm. Like I cannot, I cannot call the shots medic. I cannot call, well, we have a certain amount of um, autonomy in the United States that we cannot have in Brazil. And yet they don't hire as many uh, um, doctors. So it's just depressive. So I thank God because I was, I graduated in the United States, I was able to get a job in the private sector, which is better. And I can make my um, time. I still don't have as much autonomy as I, I used to have in the United States. Mm -hmm. But I can at least, I don't have to see people dying in the corridors. It's, it's chaotic. It's not, um, it's, it, okay, I don't want to be racist, but it's like, <laughs> you know, it's African country chaotic type of Ebola. Yeah, type right. Of, like on a daily basis, it's crazy. So they do have as well as the public hospitals, they do have a private uh, private hospitals as well, or, or doctor's offices? Yes, we have private hospitals in, in, in Sao Paulo, which is very, um, we have enough, but so, like, people cannot open any one if they want to. So, okay, so you, you said people cannot open one? No, you okay. cannot yeah, open a clinic. Here, you cannot yeah. open. A, you cannot open a clinic. You cannot open a. I know, like your urgent cares in the United States, um, mm -hmm. urgent cares and stuff like that. You cannot open that in Brazil at okay. all. Okay, I'm sure they have plenty of price controls and all kinds of. 
things absolutely the does too you make zero money in brazil like for a lot of work they they would write down that i was working 36 hours per week meanwhile i was working 52 50 something mm -hmm. and it's it's just sad i don't know why and i want to become a nurse practitioner we don't even have the course in brazil the school to become one we don't even have like if i become one i cannot come back to brazil and work as a nurse practitioner because there's no such a thing oh huh. yeah <laughs> just so you can see how terrible it is yeah that's oh that just kills yeah and you, you want to know one funny thing we import i don't know if i ever told you i will tell you very quickly we import them from cuba right because cuba and brazil we're about bffs because it's amazing <laughs> to have business ties with cuba and so they they send their doctors and they all escape because they come as slaves because brazil pays to cuba government which sends to part 30 percent of the pay to their families and mm. if they ever run away they their families will never get any money so what but they do anyways because they hate cuba and they just want to be free it's and you never hear right. of them ever again and brazil spent if i'm not mistaken up to a i'm not sure almost almost i'm not even joking 500 million reais which would be 250 million in those doctors from cuba and they're absolutely terrible no offense to cuba and cubans out there <laughs> they just don't know what they're doing as a nurse a nurse in the united states i do more than they did it was just it's just nonsense but they have this deal just so they can send money to Cuba. Just so you know, so just so Brazil can find a way to finance Castro's bullshit. Right, right. And, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a slavery. Legit. Yeah, that's well that's that's socialism for you. <laughs> yeah, wow. this is how the this is how Venezuela, Brazil and Cuba and all of these other South American countries keep each other's like social democracy alive. Hmm. Wow, just through slave labor. That's, yes, that's incredible, exactly. and that, that's something I, I, you know, if you didn't tell me that, I would have no, no idea that was going on. People no, don't know sounded, that. Yeah, People... it sounded like North Korea, where yes. you know, if you leave, it's like three gener. I mean, it's not. I guess it's not quite as bad as North Korea, but they'll put three generations in a prison. Yeah, and people think I'm lying. And I'm like, no, just just Google it. It's it's on Google. And they're like, oh, I can't find anything. And I send them, you know, Brazilian links. And there's like, they can't translate it, but it's happening. These people are coming from Cuba and their families are ha is held hostage in order for them to not run away. They work. 30% of their pay is going to their Cuban families. 70% goes to Castro and the family. Yeah. Why do you think Venezuela started breaking down more, even more in 2014, right after Brazilians' uh, president impeachment? Because of the money. They're all in the circle of uh, socialist disgrace and diabolical planning. Hmm. It sounds funny, but it's true. No, I mean, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you call call a spade a spade and that's, it's, you know, we, we people in the United States and other places who, you know, like the idea of socialism, they love to talk about all the great things about it. But as soon as you bring up this kind of stuff and the evil, the, the flat out evils that result from it. They just I, make excuses. I mean, there was Bernie Sanders um, when he was running for president. They brought yeah. up Venezuela and how terrible of a situation it was. And they said, well, they're, they're basically implementing all the policies that you promote and you say should happen in the United States. And, you know, we can see the results. So what do you have to say for that? And he says, I don't really have anything to say. And no one called him out on it. Hey, but, you know, that's where I will actually give Bernie Sanders credit. He didn't try to say not real socialism. He didn't deny it. He just said, I'm not going to talk about right. it. Right. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and when I say give him credit, I mean. In like a sick kind of yeah, way. Yeah, sick kind of way. I know. I, I've met all of the socialist kids who loved it in school and <laughs> words hurt and everything. When I was studying in the United States in nursing school, and I'm like, Go to Brazil. Stay there. I'll, I'm glad, I'll gladly change places with you. <laughs> That's you what know, I think is funny. Uh, yeah, you know that wife swap thing? I'll do it with you, kid. <laughs> I'll go to capitalism. I'll stay here. And you go to socialism. Be there. Be happy. If you love it, go 
go do it go live in it <laughs> that's why i say if you're if you're offended by some of the words that people are offended by you're living a life of privilege that's the proof right there go try to live in in cuba like you say yes and when they found out in school and in college that i was from brazil they the justice social justice club i'm not joking they wanted me to go talk to them because they <laughs> saw me as a minority and i'm like get out of here i'm not attending your yes politics i gotta want to run away from socialism i'm not gonna defend it for you it sucks <laughs> thinking about it should have gone and be like Oh, that would have been great. Been like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll do it. Get it. Get everyone there, and then just unload <laughs> on them. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the, the person who invited me had a Che Guevara shirt. I'm like, oh. oh God, why? I came to the United States, not to Cuba. I'm so confused right now. What's going on? But yeah, yeah. That's... I just wish they would wake up and see that it's not. It's none of that. Maybe the two first years will work. The last twenty will suck. Mm -hmm. Just realize it kids not too late well that's that's why we have you on here bring you on here so you can talk about um what's going on so people because i i it, unless you were on twitter talking to us about this kind of stuff and bringing it up i would have had no idea about a lot of this so you know i i, I glad In that we way. met through the internet <laughs> and thrilled to have you on to talk about this um like oh, thank my, you my dream for you guys is to you know the old American dream was a, a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. So I wish you a chicken in every pot and a tractor in every barn. Oh, got the tractor there. reference in. So. <laughs> right. Me too. I, I was thinking about writing a book about how agorist Brazil is. Agoristic. Ag agorist. Mm -hmm. Because we are. We Even though we have a shitty government and terrible laws and rules, we thrive somehow because of our <laughs> agoristic ways. And... This is what I see for Brazil. Uh, even with the terrible government, we will somehow survive all of this, all of the socialism. And now more and more people are waking up. We are detesting socialism. My mom was like, she sends me memes about how she hates like communism and, and no, like seriously like killing, like throwing the bombs in Congress and shit like that. And I'm like, yeah, mom, <laughs> that's the spirit. Keep it up. And on her, she has a, a tea church group with a bunch of old ladies and they all hate the government altogether and she tells <laughs> me the stories and i love it so i feel like the sentiment is growing and it's on but if you know if the the congress doesn't get their shit together and if we still elect to lula this next election i don't really think we have a lot mm. like to you know go from to, to still survive but with these weeks, this is why I was crying. I don't know if you remember. I even mm -hmm. said that I was crying because I've never saw a big politician pay for their crimes. And the fact that he's able to, he's now convicted to go to jail is just a, I don't know, I have a good prediction. I have a good feeling about Brazil. Good. You know, about that because of this. Good. Well, hopefully the momentum continues and hopefully the libertarian word and the Rothbard, Mises, Basiat all gets out. <laughs> And people keep learning. It will. Yeah. It will. And and to to go on your agorism thing, and we talked a little before about doing the little free market success story. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Said I wasn't going to, but um, you got me thinking. Also, you were talking a little while ago about uh, I think it was Rayblox, a cryptocurrency that's popular in Brazil. Yes. Do you want to talk about yeah. that a little bit as a free market success story? Because cryptocurrency, I don't know anything more free market that's going on in the world at the moment. Of course, sure. Um, so cryptos, Bitcoin is still a bit uh, big thing, but we need something faster, something uh, less expensive to exchange and trade with. Rayblox, uh, a big in cap YouTuber started talking about it and he you know, started explaining the white paper and everything. So the community, libertarians in Brazil started is studying it. And they said that it's it's less expensive to mine and less expensive fees to trade with. And we're, yeah, exactly. And we are thinking about uh, pushing one single coin in Brazil for right now, you know? So Rayblox was the one that he pushed, uh, that, that, he, that he talked about. He, 
and he pitched and we all kind of started getting very excited about it. I read a little bit of the white paper, I'm not gonna lie, and like, oh yeah, sure, I went through it. No, but I went, you know, through big points, did my research and kind of, people are interested in it. You know, we are pushing for it and a lot of people are buying it. It grew a lot, especially with the boom last year and the end mm -hmm. of the year. So Rayblox and cryptocurrencies are becoming a huge thing in Brazil because our money sucks dick, it just sucks, it's terrible, Inf inflated up to like, it's insane. So Raybox is helping us out. However, it's kind of um, kind of dull, kind of hard to buy it because you have to buy Bitcoin before. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoin for us in, in his eyes is super expensive. Right. So if there was a way to skip that, you know, that would be really nice. Yeah. But yeah, that's a success story right there because we are, or community in Brazil, the libertarians are really into Raybox and buying it and moving it and doing trade and trading with it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, in the United States, I'd say most people, if they haven't heard of Bitcoin, um, are living under a rock. Most people have heard of it. Most people I talk to don't own it. Um, you find that so it's kind of similar in Brazil. Yes, most people don't own it at all. But the yeah. thing about it is that it, it became kind of a survivalist thing. Yeah, buying gold yeah. in Brazil is super expensive. It's kind of crazy. So it became a well. If everything goes to hell, I will have this. Have the Bitcoin, yeah. And like I said, the biggest YouTuber and cap into it's an, an anarcho capitalist dude and he talks about anarcho capitalism all the time and he talked about it so people you know he gets up to 300,000 views on his videos so mm -hmm. you know like if five percent of people of his videos believe this and buy bitcoin and invest in it it's a it's a big number if you think about it you know oh yeah well in if a you poor think country if and two if if people that are getting into cryptocurrency um Presumably, they're going to preserve their wealth better and be able to transact better with different people and, and still get wealthier. I mean, that's that's the greatest way to to get people into uh, an ideology or or a, a paradigm shift is to see, oh, they're doing really well. So let me let me copy whatever they're doing. Exactly, and we already like our black markets in São Paulo. We already trade in dollars. Yeah. I've seen dollars in before going to United States in fucking in Sao Paulo streets, you know, it's people were trading in whatever they could, whatever they had. Right. So I think the, the crypto, uh, cryptos have a huge market in Brazil. And if they, if they're smart, the, you know, the, the, the people who are pushing for coin for crypto coins in Brazil are smarter than, or politicians as they probably are, they would get a huge, huge, crowd in brazil more i think honestly more than even in other countries like europe and or united states because you guys have a dollar you guys have a not right now but a usually very strong money fiat currency we mm -hmm. don't so mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll trade in whatever is good for us it doesn't matter if it's our national currency or not very good so, uh, Nina, do you want to tell people how they can find you on the, the internet to ask you about what's going on in Brazil? Sure. I'm always on Twitter complaining about everything. <laughs> um, on Estado Cida, which means the stateside. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was wondering what yeah. that was. Yeah. And we'll we'll link to that on the show notes page, mcflugel.com yeah. slash 76. Estado Cida, Nina Maria Bastia, and that's it. I don't... I don't I should probably do something else or another website or something like that, but I don't really yeah. have that. Twitter's fun. I have a fanfic account if you guys want to read my fanfics. No, just kidding. <laughs> no. I think no, we're friends yeah. on Goodreads, actually. We but are? Good, I great. Because so, yeah. I love, yeah, I was looking for people I knew there, and please don't don't tell people what I read, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but Bastiat. Nothing but Bastiat and Rothbard and all that stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, thank thank you so much for joining us, Nina. Um, again, everything uh, Nina's uh, Twitter handle will be on the show notes page, mcflugel.com slash 76. We'll be able to find links to subscribe to this podcast as well as our website and to check out 
all the McFlugel social media out there like Twitter and Facebook. So uh, with that, we will catch you next week. Thanks for listening. Peace. Bye.